welcome to episode one of the Knit Assembly podcast. My name is Ashley and I'm a knitter from Vancouver, Canada, where I live with my husband and daughter. Just a heads up before we get started that this will be a knitting and swearing friendly podcast. So if this is not for you, feel free to move on to another podcast. If you'd like to contact me, my details are below. So this is episode one and I'm pretty excited, but mostly nervous about getting started. I decided to start a podcast because I love watching other knitting podcasts while I knit. I also have found that they've been a call to action for me when I've lost my knitting mojo. They help me get it back by learning about new makers, new patterns, new yarns out there, and just being inspired. I also find that right now with this age of increased self-isolation, I think that we are losing our visibility to one another in our communities. And through technology, I hope that I can maintain and start new connections. And I hope that we can connect through knitting. So I'm going to be talking about today my finished objects, what I'm wearing, works in progress, and any stash enhancements. Usually they go hand in hand. Other Instagram and podcasts that I am inspired by right now. What patterns I'm dreaming about. A blast from the stash. And I have a couple questions of you at the end. So let's get started. The first object that I finished, and it's been a couple months, but because this is episode one, I get to choose how many finished objects I'd like to show. My first object that I'm wearing is the Colette T by Weeter Design. And it is knit out of the Magpie Fiber Swanky DK in the Castaway colorway, which is this great neutral browns, kind of stony color and it's a t-shirt with simple ribbing at the, at the end and ribbing on the bottom and hits me about hip length and I really love it and it's a great uh, wardrobe staple. So my next finished object is the Fireside Sweater by Jane Richmond and technically this was done two years ago. I had finished objects, photos taken in Rhinebeck. But as I wore it, I realized it was too short. I'm five, eight and a half, and where it hit on my torso was just at the top of my hip bone, and I wanted it to be a little bit longer uh, for such a cozy sweater. So I decided to use up a lot of the yarn that I had, but I unfortunately didn't bring that along with my trip to Rhinebeck. So I brought this big bulky sweater and didn't have enough yarn to actually finish it. So I ripped out the ribbing and then just took it home with me and then it kind of languished for a while. I finally added four inches to the bottom, which seems like a lot, but it actually now ends up being a tunic style, which I actually really like. I knit it out of Cascade Eco Plus and it's got this great shawl collar. The Pattern is by Jane Richmond. And it goes up and up and up. The color is a little bit off with the lighting, but it is a, it's a chocolate, chocolate brown. Slightly itchy on my skin, but I, I can deal with that for the amount of work that it, <laughs> that it um, gave me. And it's really, it's a really good layer for underneath the rain jacket here in Vancouver when I have to stand out at the playground. It keeps me nice and warm uh, on the inside underneath my rain jacket. So really good layer. The next finished object that I made was actually my most recent finished object, which are the Easy Fingerless Mitts by Calypso Knits. And it is a free pattern. It's a worsted weight. I knit these for my daycare provider um, as a Christmas present. Two nights ago, I decided, oh, I'll whip these up in a couple of days, probably. Nope, they knit up in literally that night. So it was four hours worth of knitting and I have my Christmas gift. I used stash yarn for this, which was Debbie Bliss Cashmerino Erin. And it's out of the grape colorway. It looks like red wine. and. The stripes were an addition by my daughter, her request, to have yellow stripes. 
and it actually ends up looking like a Gryffindor or Harry Potter themed mitts. They weren't meant to be, but I really like them. I think she's gonna really like them and that's, that's uh, what matters. Super easy knit, very fast. My next finished object is a sweater by Isabel Kramer called Aldous and I knit it out of the Uncommon Thread posh fingering <laughs> and all the links to everything I mentioned are going to be below as well as in the notes section. Um, I've been looking for the perfect cool pink for years. And again, I was at, when I was at Rhinebeck at the Indie Untangled event, I came to a booth called Yarn Culture and I spotted the perfect cool pink, that blue undertone pink, not the warm undertone pink that doesn't quite uh, go as well for me. So I found four skeins, I believe, and I wanted five. I didn't know what I was gonna make. I was like, you know what, let's just get more. And Patty, who I believe was running the booth, she's the owner, she went to the kits and said, I'd be happy to get one out of the kit for you. So I was able to get five skeins of this. So thank you, Patty. And it is beautiful. I love it. It is one of my perfect sweaters. I just finished this a couple weeks ago. I hadn't even cut the extra pieces of yarn yet and I decided to wear it. So it is starting to pill a little bit, but besides that it is beautiful. It's got a really nice sheen. It's this light cool pink and the pattern was super easy and fun to knit and something that I learned um, to do on this pattern and I find that I like to pick up social knitting patterns. So ones that I can just pick up and knit anywhere. I do not have the mental capacity right now to work on anything more difficult than a social knitting knit. So I expect and kind of maybe assume that I have enough skill to, and that I've learned everything on these social knits. And I was pleasantly surprised. This one has a Latvian braid at the bottom. And if you haven't done a Latvian braid before, look it up, it's super easy and it makes this beautiful, beautiful braid. It's like you're twisting pearl stitches, basically. Another feature of the pattern is that it has this line on the back, a pearl ridge. And yeah, just makes it look like a casual sweatshirt, I think. But uh, with the yarn, it kind of makes it a little more fancy. Another pattern I finally finished after I think it was two years in the making was this lace weight t-shirt also by Isabel Kramer called the Westburn Sweater. I knit one sleeve of this and all the way to full length and I decided, you know what, I think it's actually going to be a t-shirt for me. Just felt better. The one thing that I'm not too happy with is the amount of roll. And this is what the pattern was supposed to be. There's nothing wrong with the pattern. Uh, that was the design. I just changed my mind about it. So it's rolling a bit on the sleeves. I think I might take it out one more time and uh, put a little rib uh, edge so it doesn't roll on each of the sleeves. I knit this out of Madeline Tosh Tannehill, which is this this is probably the most variegated that I'll knit with. Um, it's this beautiful mix of mossy greens, browns, almost black in some, some spots. And it kind of makes me feel like I'm in a forest or in a swamp, <laughs> but I, re I really like it. And it's a lace weight yarn. My daughter, thankfully, is really into handmade knits and wants me to knit her everything, which is, which is great. So I'm going to use that as long as I can. She's three. And I knit the Mini Gale Swancho by Alicia Plummer out of Cascade Eco Plus in this dark purple. It's basically a dark eggplant color. And added these cute little buttons that I had in my stash from Button Button, a local store here in Vancouver. And it is, that's the back, so it's got a ridge 
It's the cutest thing on her. I think um, it's a really perfect layering piece for scootering. She loved wearing it while scootering, having her leg warmers on. Um, she, she looked really good in it and it provided a lot of warmth. That being said, I think it's too bulky for being underneath the uh, winter jackets now. So this will be something that hopefully will still fit her next fall. Another finished object that I finished for her recently was a pair of self-striping socks. She wanted to have purple and pink striped socks. That was her ask. And I couldn't find any dyers that just dyed two colored self-striping skeins. So I went to my favorite local self-striper dyer who is Mud Punch, Chantel, and asked her if she would custom dye me two fingering skeins uh, for, for me. And she was happy to do it. And right now on Instagram, I believe in December, if you check her out, she will is doing custom orders again this, this month. So shoot her an email if it uh, works for you. So I chose the Rye Light sock pattern by Tin Can Knits and I omitted the garter in favor of the stockinette. I really wanted a simple knit to show off the stripes and these socks fit perfectly. The one problem that I had had though after they were knit was that they were super slippery on the wood floor, especially for a toddler. So I researched the uh, this puffy paint which you can get at Michael's for like a dollar or two. And you can add the this puffy paint in the design, wait for it to dry and put on some steam or a little bit of heat and it'll puff up. I decided that I was too lazy, honestly, and I didn't add the steam or the heat. Um, so it's a flat grip, but it grips well enough. So I'm super pleased with this and she is super pleased with wearing these. They're pretty cute. I don't actually like knitting socks uh, normally because I don't wear knitted socks. I don't like the feel of wearing knitted socks and honestly, I don't wear socks that often at all. So I am more than happy though to knit them when someone else will really love them and I'm super glad she really loves them. These socks really knit themselves. I don't know if you are suffering from any knitting mojo or want to make just finish a project. I would advise get some self-striping yarn if you can, and obviously preferably from <laughs> Chantel. She's great, but there are a lot of self-striping dyers out there. It was fun. They just knit themselves. I was just so excited to get to the next stripe. And I was done those in two evenings. It was it was great. So super, super fast and, and a lot of fun to knit. The last finished object that I have to show is something that also has been in the works for about a year. My husband came to me in September last year and asked for a knitted cardigan with a zipper. I said, no problem, I'm gonna get worsted. I went to Knit City last year. I found the perfect color, which was Long John's in the Brooklyn Tweed Shelter from and Beehive Yarn Booth. And it's this great red, rusty red color perfect, and they had the perfect name for it. So I bought the yarn. I started last November. COVID hit and zipper supplies were actually pretty difficult to get here in Vancouver. So I ordered a zipper and it turned out that there are all, a lot of different kinds of zippers. Ones that are longer, ones that are shorter, ones that are hidden for skirts, not cardigans. And so after three zipper debacles and a wonderfully friendly and patient friend, Lisa, who's Fluff and Hustle on Instagram, I finally had the knitting and zipper in after six months. I knit the sleeves, I set in the sleeves, and I just thought, you know what, we better try it on the husband just to make sure that it so he tried it on and he realized that the sleeves were a bit too tight 
and therefore, and the yarn was a little bit itchy. And after a lot of effort, of course, I want him to be happy with this sweater. I want him to be able to reach for it and say, yes, I want to wear that. And if it was going to be too itchy or there was a negative connotation to it, that wasn't going to happen. So he said, I'd be happy to wear that as a vest. So the project that I have is a finished object is a vest and the sweater pattern, the original sweater pattern, cardigan pattern is Chicane by Cookie A. And it's this cyclist cardigan, which would have looked great in, in maybe a different yarn for him, but it is going to be a vest. It is a vest. So I had originally said that I would have this done in about a month by Christmas. I started in November. I was like, yeah, Christmas, no problem. Christmas came and went last year. And then I said, definitely by your birthday, just February came and went zipper debacles later. I now have it finished and I have yet to give it to him. So I think tonight might be the night where he can wear it and call it a finished object. But I'm super happy to get that off the needles. So before we move into the works in progress, I do have one more finished object, actually 20 finished objects. I decided back in February that I would knit 20 hats for charity in 2020. I knit 20 hats. I finished them a week ago and I chose a local charity to give them to. It's something that I felt that I could do. It's something small and hopefully would make a little bit of an impact in people who don't have a hat and or necessarily homes life. I know it's small in the scheme of things, but something little to keep their head warm that maybe they're not worried about paying an extra $5, $6 to get a hat. I knit them out of acrylic and I decided to have fun with it. And I used the Tin Can Knits Barley Hat and again, actually omitted the garter stripe. And I knit 20 and I was super obsessed about it and I need to knit some more. I did reds and blues and yellows and navies and grays. Majority of our homeless population here in Vancouver is male. And so I wanted to target that audience and make sure that it would, the hats would fit. So I dropped off the hats together with my daughter. I'm gonna put a picture here with uh at the kettle society and they were very thankful for it they're a local organization that provides outreach right now to the homeless and those who might have issues with mental health or uh, addiction or poverty and normally they have a drop-in center i noticed that they do a food program during the week so i met george from the outreach center at the kettle society and he was very thankful said that they would go to good use and what they would do is quarantine them first of course and then walk the streets and ask people if they would like a hat along with other provisions that they provide the need is great so if there are other knitters out there that knit even one hat and drop it off that's one head that could be a little bit warmer and also it was a great netflix knit that i could just grab and knit a couple rows on every every night one last project that I'd like to show you is something that I knit for the Christmas tree a couple years ago. And this is the, I believe it's called the Teeny Tiny Mochi Mochi Santas. I think he's super cute. He's really fuzzy and he's a little bit pink, so maybe he's had too much fun in the sun, but I really like it and my daughter does too. I read my Ravelry notes on this actually, and I remember because it's so tiny, it is pretty finicky. It was about two hours of finicking around with double points. Um, so beware of that. But of course, anything tiny and intricate is going to have a little bit of annoyance to it. But I think the end result is super cute and two hours is something that you can suffer through. So moving on to the works in progress, I'm going to kick it off with sheep. That's the way the pattern's written. It's sheep with an exclamation mark by Susan B. Anderson. And I am knitting this for my daughter who wanted a purple sheep. She loves purple, everything purple. And I am currently 
knitting one of four feet, of course. I just put on the ears. This has been a work in progress for a little bit because I decided to use fingering yarn instead of reading the pattern, which calls for DK weight. So I had to do a little bit of math, um, but this pattern is super cute and it comes with three different styles of sheep. So I am very close and I'm hoping to finish this tonight. I need to obviously finish the legs and sew on some eyes and that is it. Another work in progress that I've just finished swatching for, so in my books that's a work in progress, is the Good Neighbor Cardigan by Amy Herzog. I still need to knit a zippered cardigan full sleeve for my husband, so I got to go to Three Bags Full, which is a local yarn store, and find something warm and fluffy, and warm and fluffy I did. And I found Wolf Oak Far, and it's like a dark plum. In some lights, it looks like brown. And I don't know if you've seen Wolf Oak before, but it's actually this chain. So multiplies that are chained together to make the strand. And it's super plump. I'm super excited to knit with this. Already on my hands, just winding it. It's beautiful and knitting the swatch. It's gorgeous, so I'm super excited. And I'm knitting the Good Neighbor Cardigan by Amy Herzog. And this cardigan looks like a Fred Rogers cardigan. She designed it after one of his cardigans. So I think, and I hope Andrew will love this. Another work in progress that I finished recently was the Petite Lisette dress. And I've forgotten the designer, so I'll put that below. It's, I believe it was the six month size. This was a gift for a baby that was born two years ago. So I was a little slow and I didn't finish it and I don't really know why. I knit it out of Hope Sai, which I'm going to butcher, I'm sorry, all the Finnish people, but it's a Finnish yarn given to me by a friend and it has a little bit of Stellina in it, which you might be able to see. It's beautiful and pretty cute. I finally blocked it last week but I accidentally blocked it on top of my Cascade Fireside sweater, which is the dark chocolate. And as you can probably see, there we go, it has turned brown. I've got some brown splotches here and I can't get it out. So what I've decided to do is take a page from Tin Can Knit's recent posts and where they over dyed it. So they over dyed a little sweater cardigan into this dark, crimson red and I think that this sweater would look amazing uh, over dyed. I have not dyed anything so I'm going to look up how to do it and that's going to be another project this December so we'll see how that turns out. Another work in progress that I just started was a knit for my daughter. Surprise surprise it's purple. It is the Fable sweater. It is going to be oh, this purple and cream, cream for the unicorn. And it's literally a unicorn with the sleeve being the neck and you have some fringe hanging down. I'm going to be relearning how to do intarsia, um, something I'm a little bit nervous about, but I'm going to do a lot of practicing. The yarn I'm using is Ultra Wool Chunky. It's a Broco yarn and it's nice and soft and it's 100% wool. Super thick, I believe it's, yeah, it's bulky weight. So it's flying by and I love how this purple is knitting up. It's kind of this gray purple. And I'm just about to start the unicorn head here. I am an iced latte snob. I drink iced lattes all the time. This is my drink of choice. This is my coffee of choice. I have it in the stroller. I have it at the playground. I have it at the coffee shops while I'm knitting. I, but the problem with iced lattes, especially in the winter, is that the cup gets really cold. And so my hand gets super cold too. So I've decided to knit a couple of cup cozies. I think most people usually put cup cozies on so they have insulated cups and hold the temperature of the drink in. I just want to 
make sure my hands are comfortable while I'm holding my ice latte out in the winter. So I'm going to use a couple of skeins, different skeins from my stash to knit probably three cozies. One is Yoth yarn in this spruce color. One is a Tannis Fiber Arts in this, like, I think it's, pop, it's not poppy, it's, and it's not grapefruit, it's the one in between, I'll put the link below, but it's this, a little bit lighter than what it's showing up. And the third is the Sweet Georgia Skein. Um, that is, again, don't know the colorway, so I'll put it below. And just simple, I'm gonna use the pattern called the Mug Sweater, which calls from a DK weight and knit probably three of those up and I think that is going to probably take me only a night or two if that to finish a couple to use. And the last work in progress that I want to show you today is one in a bag unfortunately discontinued but this bag makes me really happy. This is a bag from my friend Melissa on Vancouver Island called and her Instagram is Miso Crafty Knits. She still is knitting and doing other crafts, so follow her Instagram, but she's no longer selling bags. I think I got this from her in either the, I think the first knit city in Vancouver. I have this work in progress. The idea came from Clara Parks, who once wrote that she has a sweater project, I believe, that she just knits two or three rows every year. She picks it up, she does a couple of rows, puts it back and works on other things. So I have the same style of project. I've been working on this shawl for the last is that six years. I started in, the, in July of 2014, according to Ravelry. And I found this amazing yarn at one of the first knit cities called Yummy Yarn Cashmere Silk Lace, and it is this golden thread. Ignore the wrapping job, which is non-existent, and so looks like I'm gonna have to do a little untangling, but it is gorgeous, isn't it? It's the, this is my perfect colorway. It's literally like knitting with golden thread. I love it, it's super soft, oh, it just melts in your hand. It's unfortunate though that she has gone out of business and this, this yarn is discontinued, but it is beautiful. So every year I pick this shawl up and I add two rows. By the time I figure out where I am in the pattern again, I need to take better notes, especially for a project like this. Um, I probably end up doing another four or five rows just to make it worth it. The pattern that I am knitting is the Ballerina Estonica by Christina Villamate. And it's this beautiful lacy shawl. And obviously, oh, that's the wrong side. Let's do the right side. Obviously, I've done a lot of lifelines. There have been a lot more lifelines that have been pulled out, ripped out, gone back to. Uh, it's definitely a project that I need to concentrate on. Um, but I look forward to doing a couple rows before the end of Christmas. All right, I want to speak to you about a couple of Instagram accounts that really inspire me right now. So one of those is Boku. I will put her link below. She is a bag maker out of Toronto, Canada, and every single one of her bags is like a work of art. I have her on my wish list for Christmas this year and I'm really hoping the family comes through on that. It's beautiful, I love her work, so go check her out. Another Instagram account that I really like right now is Lena Ivalo. She is a Finnish knitter and she takes beautiful photography, so it's really nice to kind of get your mojo back by looking at what she's making. The last one is Crafty Kimmy Knits. And this woman has knit so many sweaters that honestly, I just want to put in my queue. Every single one is something that I want to knit and I want in my wardrobe right now. So go check her out as well. A couple of podcasts that I really like watching right now. One is Hohi 
journal. So this is Hohi Locatelli. If you don't know her, she is a infamous knitwear designer, if one can be infamous and a knitwear designer. She has designed a ton of things. What I really like about her podcast is the fact that she is super relaxing. Her voice is really nice to listen to, but she's very detailed about her process and how she thinks of designs and how she executes on her designs and I really like listening to how she thinks and and getting that down into a knitted object and also all the different projects that she's working on and and her overall process so I really like that so go check her out I have started watching her from the beginning so and that was only recently I think August and she has 50 journals right now on YouTube so go watch Second podcast that I really like watching is Pippin Pin or Megan from Abbotsford, BC. So she's local to me here in Vancouver. She is someone who means business about her knitting. She has lots of different businesses related to knitting. So whether or not it's designing, having a store, she does an advent of sorts and does that every year. So go check her out. She's someone who means business about her knitting but she comes across in a very light, friendly, fun, and practical way. Another podcast that I really love watching is Dunder Dave Knits, her Knitting Vicariously podcast. She is this absolutely hilarious knitter who lives in London, and she's got a beautiful yarn wall behind her and knits some great projects and has a lot of knitting humor, so go check her out. I'm really happy that she's started recording again. So something that I've been dreaming about in a pattern is a recent pattern that was released by Tammy Gore, who is a knitwear designer in New Jersey. It's her graphic elements sweater. I love the geometric design and the gray and yellow combo. It's just beautiful and I like designs where you can easily see how you can mix and match motifs or add or change up the colors. And I think this one kind of checks those boxes. It looks like a nice statement piece and something that would easily fit into a neutral wardrobe as well. So thank you, Tammy. I would suggest go check that out. So a segment I wanted to do was Blast from the Stash. And this is where I use a random number generator and use that to pick something to show you from my stash and try to figure out what I might make with it. So I came up with this beautiful sweater quantity of Madeline Tosh Sport. I love this color right now. It's actually quite fitting. Uh, it's very Christmassy, uh, this dark cranberry, and I'm envisioning a cardigan out of this. If you have any suggestions of a cardigan to make, please put a pattern idea below. So the last thing I'd like to talk about today is a couple of questions for you. So I want to know what other knitting podcasts that you like to watch. I always like subscribing to more and, and seeing different perspectives, especially on the same craft. And what made you click on my podcast? There's a lot out there I know, and I'd love to hear that. And whereabouts in the world you are knitting. Thanks for joining me today. We'll see you next time.